I was out playing bar league volleyball with a buddy. And um, I was like, dude, do you know any trails in the Midwest I could do that's like over a thousand miles long? And she told me about the Ice Age Trail. Everybody I talked to, they're like, it's a pretty flat trail. No, 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 no. Let me tell you, this trail is so hilly. So that's how little I knew about it. I know that it's rare for people of color to feel comfortable outside sometimes, especially since like, I, you know, I live in Duluth, which is, you know, mainly, you know, white folks. And so I rarely ever see people like myself on the trail. And I was like, well, if I can inspire other people of color to get out there and like keep, you know, keep getting out there, you'll see more, you know, you'll see more people that look like you. Like, you know, there's some people that don't like being alone in the inner city, you know? And, you know, if you take, you know, country folks and be like, you have to, you know, go to Times Square by yourself and figure your way through New York, like, they'd be like, I oh, don't know, man, I don't know about that. You know, it's the same way, just the unknown going the opposite direction. Like, you gotta find your way through the woods. I oh, don't know, man, I don't know about that. She has always loved the outdoors. She's always been so adventurous that nothing surprises me that she wants to do because that's just the way she is. She wants to see it all. Her last hike, I volunteered to be her drop-off person. And so she didn't tell me the whole story. We're driving up the shore because I thought I was dropping her off at the end of the Gunflint Trail. No, we were dropping her car off at the end of the Gunflint Trail and then taking her to Ely so that she could walk, she could hike from Ely to the Gunflint Trail. And so we didn't get to Ely until it was like 11 o'clock at night and it started to snow. I said, where are you going to sleep? I'll find some place to sleep on the trail. There's no cell service. And it was cold and it was raining and snowing virtually the whole time. So I did not have contact with her and I knew the weather was not good. I knew she was out in the middle of virtually nowhere. Those kind of those kind of trips, this is nothing <laughs> compared to those. I started, I planned probably for about two months for this trip. So getting my gear, finding, looking at the route, because really I knew nothing about this route. Emily reached out to me on a female mushing website. And so she, she just threw it out there that if anyone was looking to borrow her a sled dog, she was interested in doing a 1200 mile hike. And I thought, of course I'd be interested in doing that because my daughters who are dog mushers had a mentor, a female mentor, and they, they wouldn't be able to do what they, they've done without that. And so, so Emily came out to the farm and, and met Diggins. The minute her and Diggins met, it was like magic. She went on some training runs with her and camped overnight up near Duluth and it was perfect. So if you wanted a technical term of the way that I did this trip, it would actually be called Canacross. Canacross is running, hiking, walking with a dog attached around your waist. Diggins only carried her own stuff. If we, like, if we had some like trail magic happen and I didn't feel like taking my pack off, I'd shove it in her bag and she'd look at me like, that's not mine, <laughs> you know? My first favorite story and picture was of Emily and Diggins in a tent on New Year's Eve and they're both looking out at the night sky and just enjoying New Year's Eve together on this remote part of the trail, you know, that, I mean, it was just like, okay, this is the beginning of their adventure. I created an itinerary. But look, that itinerary went right out the window. <laughs> like after the first week, I got a bum knee the first week and so I had to take a zero day after on, this, on day six. And I was like, oh, we've already screwed up the schedule. <laughs> my, my quad was pulling on my patella tendon and so my knee was off track, my, my kneecap was off track. Um, and it really, it hurt so bad. I'd never had knee issues before in my life. I have a buddy and she's a, a decathlete, so she does really long, long, long marathons. Like, how do I get through stuff like this? She's like, you just push through it. She's like, use KT tape, wrap it as best as you can, whatever she's like, and try to keep pushing through it. I was bummed, because that was, that was the first weekend. You know what I mean? Like, I had two months left. 
<laughs> you know, like, I was like, am I gonna finish this? It's the mental game. I always tell people like, your body will adapt to the trail, but you have to, you have to agree to your mind changing to get through the trail. The most surprising thing was the people that I encountered on the trail. But the people of Wisconsin like, came out of the woodwork everywhere and would leave me like food, water. I got a couple extra pairs of socks from folks. People knew where I was before I would know where I was gonna be. I was contacted to shuttle her when she got to the Mondo Esker in Taylor County. The next day, I got to hike a section of Mondo with her, with my snowshoes. I led the, led the way and cut trail for her for about three miles. She's just amazing. You know, to take this, to take on a through hike, first of all, is a unique group of people. There's, I think there's maybe a, a little bit less than 300 people that have, have through hiked the trail nonstop from one end to the other. Um, but to do it in the winter, she's only the second person and the first woman to do that. She got hit with two weeks of very sub-zero weather and she was hiking all the way through that. And it's just amazing to me that, you know, she had the endurance to do that. Got down to, you know, the wind chill was like negative 50. The air temperature that I saw the lowest was negative 37. And so we had to stay inside and I felt like we were just missing out on, on the actual purpose of this trip, you know, being outside all the time, but like for my safety and for Diggins' safety, you know, all these people pitched in and let us stay in their homes. The goal of this is not to be crazy, you know, frostbitten, no fingers, no toes, Emily, after this. Like the goal is just to finish this trail. So I had to change my mindset a little bit after that. <laughs> if you're looking for a trail in the Midwest <laughs> that will give you a little bit of everything, this is the one. You'll hit a lot of, you'll hit flat parts, you'll hit a lot of road walks, and then with, with the glacier, so it's a terminal moraine, right? It's not flat, it is not a flat trail. <laughs> you'll, hit, you'll hit some really long hills, you'll hit a lot of switchbacks, you'll hit a lot of streams, you'll hit a lot of lakes, you'll hit a lot of marshes, you'll hit the prairies, you'll hit the savannas. Um, you'll hit the coniferous forest, you'll hit every, you'll hit everything here. There was one night, and uh, it was after a long day of post holing, going slow, all day. And we got into this hemlock forest, and we got to this like, uh, this high point, and it was so quiet in there, and it was awesome. And the, the hemlocks are so beautiful. <clears throat> I think we, 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 had, we hadn't even touched 15 miles yet for that day. And uh, I was like, Diggins, I think we need to stay here tonight. I just pointed, I pointed the tent door uh, to the west and the sunset was just like, oh my, the colors were just, cause we were so high up, we could watch the sunset forever pretty much. And then the moon came up behind the tent and it was like someone had turned on their headlamp or like their, sorry, their, their car light, it was so bright the moon just like shining right through the tent. It was, it was nuts. And then we we're just like laying there sleeping and the wolves are howling around us. It was just like this perfect, everything was just, it was one of those like moments in a movie where you would see like that person's outdoors, <laughs> you know, like that person's living outdoors. Um, and I will, yeah, I will never forget that. That was awesome. One of the things about solo hiking or hiking alone is just coming back to kind of center of yourself and who you are when you're, when you're by yourself, right? There's nobody else to really fight with. I mean, I had a dog, but she, really, she rarely did many things wrong. She's been really possessive of Emily, and I think she thinks she's Emily's mom, for sure. Somebody doing a box drop for me, and she reached across, and Diggins nipped her hand, and I was like, 
And, and, and when I met, I mean, when I met Dickens, she's the sweetest, she's so sweet. She is really a sweet girl. And then it happened again, I was like, this is not a one-off. I'm like, we have a nipper. I don't know. And I talked to Sherry, I called her a couple days ago. I'm like, just to let you know, this is what's developed. She's like, she did that with her puppies too. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, was she my mom? <laughs> like, she thinks that, she thinks that I'm her puppy. I don't know. Well, we became a duo, so it's fine. I kept a journal. I tried to do it every single day. And then every day I would make a, it's day whatever video um, and just take pictures along the way as well. My Instagram just had such a small following. It's just my friends and like people who knew me from like Glen Sheen and working at work. And after the first week, like a thousand people were following. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is nuts. And then next week, like 2000 people were following. And I think we're pretty close to like nine people following this journey. My grandpa like pretty much printed out like every article and like, every news clipping, every social media post, he like printed them out and like made a binder of, of, of the stuff. It's just, it's just so good to like, to know that they're, they're still my biggest cheerleaders. And they have been for a long, they have been for, for 28, 28 years strong. It took a long time and you just remember all in one collapse like all of these memories of the cold and the wind and the everything else that comes together so the biggest emotion is just at the end when it all comes crashing down at once and then saying goodbye pretty much to my best friend you know I call her my associate but we made it to best friend level when I would meet people and they would be like oh you're so inspiring like oh, I could never do what you do I'm like look I love, I love Netflix. I love my couch. I know I seem thin right now, but I love food. I love to sit on like a Saturday morning, sleeping in, plopping right down on the couch, all day, bag of chips. I love it. And I've been like that since I was a kid. Like, that's why I like to encourage people that this, the outdoors is, you don't have to be some like crazy, like huge, like brand wearing, you know, whatever outdoor enthusiast to, to, to want to do this stuff. You can love sitting on your couch and eating chips and watching Netflix. You can binge watch as much as you want, you know, just still get outside. The people who feel connected to this trip, I hope that they feel like we, I hope they feel inspired. And I hope that, I hope that fire lasts a long time. I hope they can carry it and pass it on to somebody else, you know. I swear I'm like, especially with, I always encourage parents, like your little kids are watching what you're doing, man. Like. If you're outside, they'll probably be outside. I didn't just fall from a stork and then all of a sudden love to be out in the outdoors. You know, this is passed down through my genes, you know, passed down through my line, my family. What I'm really looking for is a kid who's like 10 years old right now. And when they find me when I'm 38 and they're 20 years old and they're like, I saw you and you did the thing. And I knew that when I turned 20 years old or 18, that I wanted to do something like that you did.